We have a lot to talk about. Bitcoin crashing 7% yesterday. German selling, the German government. We have Mt. Gox distributions and miners that are just dumping every day. A lot to cover here. Stay tuned. All right, guys, let's just jump straight into this. So we're looking at Bitcoin here. We can see that Bitcoin right now is just under 62K. We had about a 7% move once we got under 64K yesterday. And this was actually one of the biggest washouts that we've had over the last few years. So let's just talk about why this actually happened. So we had this big move up here um, over the last few weeks or May and going into, into June. And the FOMC meeting, which was a couple of weeks ago, was pretty bearish um, for risk assets, although stocks didn't really mind them that much. But crypto really started to have a lot of sellers step in after that hawkish FOMC meeting. And we know that this is primarily miners or miners, let's just say they had a big part to play in this. We can see that miners reserves, if you can see this purple line here, has basically been down only the entire year. And as of right now, miner reserves are the lowest they've been in 14 years, according to my sources. And they've sold about $2 billion of Bitcoin over the last few months. This is very significant whenever you have stable coins that are not really moving up, okay? And I think I have a stable coin chart here. You can see that the stable coin growth, which is this, you can just look at this pink line here. It was growing for much of the year. Now it's, it's actually, it's not that it's actually going down. It just isn't growing, if that makes any sense. This is actually not necessarily the total amount of stable coins. This is the 60 day kind of average change. And it's basically, it's, it's flatlined. We can see that, um, it's pretty much flatlined when we look at it from a different perspective. This is more of a simple way to look at it. But this is the major stable coins aggregated together. And I'm mentioning this to say, when you have big sellers stepping in and you don't have liquidity moving in, and this is a proxy for liquidity, stable coin market caps, that's a recipe for downside price action, okay? So again, we had a hawkish FOMC, miners starting to sell because they think that, hey, you know, I better sell now to pay for expenses, you know, the electricity that miners need to pay for their operations. They are a business. It's really a trade for them. They need to be, maintain operational. And in their perspective, well, maybe they won't be able to sell at these levels. Something could happen. So it's really just a risk management protocol for these miners that are getting squeezed now that we've had the halving, which if you don't know what the halving is, that is when the distribution of Bitcoin to miners is cut in half meaning their revenue is cut in half. You know, assuming that the prices remain the same or go lower, which is even worse. So they're getting squeezed. This is very typical. This happens, to my knowledge, every, every single um, having Miners start to get squeezed several months after. And it happens to be during a time when liquidity is not moving in. So that's what kind of started, you know, the move down. Okay, that's what really started this move down. But what really got the move going over the last few days, okay, was two other events. Notably, or we'll just start with, the German government. So the German government has seized about $3 billion of Bitcoin. Um, I don't know when they did this, but they've had it for a while. And they decided to start selling that Bitcoin. So we can see these addresses. People picked up on it that they were moving Bitcoin around in the market. It's going to try to price that in or hedge for that. So that created some selling pressure. We started getting some selling pressure here in this region here. This is where, you know, the German government news started to kick in. People were hedging, trying to getting out of trying to get out of Dodge, so to speak, from those flows. So we had some really strong hedging selling here. But this big move here, okay. This is from the Mt. Gox distributions that are that are going to be happening in July. So I guess it was the Mt. Gox uh, company itself or, or, or some entity had released. Um, or I guess this is like the, the, yeah, I guess it's Mt. Gox. They released some information that they're going to be 
paying back people that got their Bitcoin hacked back in 2013. So this is billions of dollars and people are freaking out about it or started to freak out about it yesterday because they know what that means is there's going to be some additional selling pressure as they do these distributions, okay? So you have <laughs> so many different things. It's funny because this is how bottoms are made. You have the German government selling billions of dollars, miners selling billions of dollars, and then Mt. Gox, I'm not sure exactly what the total will be on that, but it's in the hundreds of millions that we know for sure will be sold into dollars. And this is what you get, right? This is what you get. And the interesting thing about this is if we go back in time, we can see that this is actually one of the most brutal sell-offs we've had over the last few years. And that is saying a lot considering some of the sell-offs we've had have been pretty darn dramatic, including the FTX crisis here. As you can see, RSI got below 30, which is a indicator that or indication that the market is oversold. The Silicon Valley banking crisis, RSI got below 30, barely. And then we had the absolute bottom of last summer. Okay, big liquidation event here. This was really wasn't an event here. It just a lot of leverage just got blown out at once from a big seller. And here we are. I'm trying to paint a picture here that you don't get this oversold unless you have typically some pretty bearish things happening. And here we are. So German government, Mt. Gox, miners. This is a bottom in my opinion. Now this doesn't this doesn't mean that it won't go lower maybe later, but I think you will see at least a move to 64K. And the reason why I say 64K is that is the sort of the line in the sand. We can see that 64K is really a very important level. You got the 100 day moving average at 64K. You have, which is the middle of the range is basically 64K. 64K is the on-chain realized price. I think that's what that's called, which is another way of saying uh, basically the average price or the average entry of people who have been buying, I think it's over the last three months or at least in this range, meaning as you go under that price, people start to get underwater and maybe tempted to sell. So when we lost this level, that's why, you know, that's why you had this big flush. You will probably go back to this minimum, but I do not think you're going to make a new low, or at least I don't think you'll go much lower than, than this 200 day moving average, which is basically what we bounced off of and this previous low. So we're confirming this bottom here. I think this looks pretty good. I think you're going to start to see people scaling in. Doesn't mean that we're going to break up to the upside, but I think we're going to chop around and probably grind higher as we go into July. And the reason why I think we have a decent probability outside of markets like to revert back to mean is because the seasonality component is pretty compelling here. Over the last nine years, the strongest two weeks out of those nine years on average is the first two weeks of July. So July is a very seasonally strong period, as you can see here, a very seasonally strong period when it comes to the stock market. Now, obviously, that is different than crypto, but it, it is a, look, it's flows. Flows like to come in, and this will be a new quarter as we go into July. And you might see hedge funds and different shops putting in money into Bitcoin and ETH and, and other things. So I think there's a decent chance that could happen. If we look at ETH, it didn't make a new low or it didn't even test its, you know, its previous low. It's holding really almost the middle of its range here, which is which is pretty impressive when you think about it. And this is because of the ETF. So it's above its 100 day moving average. This looks very good. ETH BTC still looks pretty darn good. It is struggling to break this previous high, but as you can see, it's creating some constructive price action. This is ETH versus Bitcoin. So if you're if you're longing Bitcoin, you would prefer that it's outperforming Bitcoin. That's why we, we, we take a look at this. I do think this is going to trade higher. The ETF is likely to go live in a few weeks, I think maybe even next week, early July. And I have this little line here. This is what I'm thinking could happen. Now, look, take this with a grain of salt. I could change my mind, you know, 50 times before, <laughs> you know, a couple weeks from now. But as of right now, I'm thinking that this is probably going to trade back up to this 4K level as the ETF starts to get marketed to different, um, you know, people, people in TradFi who might be interested. I think BlackRock and Fidelity and others will, will really start to, you know, push that on their clients. I think that could get us up to this level. 
But I think ultimately we're likely to kind of consolidate before the election. Who knows, maybe we can break out before then, but that's kind of what I'm thinking for Bitcoin and ETH is we're going to grind higher, but we're probably going to start to go sideways going into the election. But as I said, I think the next couple of weeks in July might be actually pretty good for, for Bitcoin and ETH reverting you know, further to the upside. Now, we can see that meme coins are just ripping since um, this, this sell-off happened yesterday. Pop, Popcat here, I mean, it's up like 80% from the lows, even more. I'm just taking the average, you know, closes of these candles here. With having a really nice bounce, it's up 30% off the lows. Pepe, a very similar situation here, you know, up about 20% off the lows. So these meme coins are really, I mean, it, you cannot deny the strength of these things. Bitcoin just had one of its biggest pullbacks over the last two years. And these things are ripping. I mean, this is above its 50-day moving average. Pepe, very, very strong. So we're still in this environment where memes are really outperforming everything else. And we can see that some of the previous winners, they're not really catching the bid. So we talked about Render and AI coins in the past. You can see that they're not really catching, they're, they're really not getting the liquidity that they were just a few weeks ago. As you can see, Render is below its 200-day moving average, near struggling to get above its 200-day moving average. We can see things like Avalanche well below its 200-day moving average, absolutely wrecked. This is pretty much the story for crypto in general. If we were to just go down the line here, you can see that, I mean, most things are not looking that great. So just random coins. Okay, I'm just going to go through random coins here. And, and you'll see that things, all coins are absolutely hammered. Um, they have not really had a cycle. So I'm showing you this, you know, these different altcoins to really illustrate <laughs> we have not really had a, a, an altcoin cycle yet. These things are basically at the lows, some of them. You can see Arbitrum is literally at the lows, its previous lows here. And then you have memes that are running hard. So Bitcoin, ETH, and memes, that's really the story here. Solana looks pretty decent. It is... Um, you know, trying to find a bottom here, we can see that it's right above its 200-day moving average. Solana, I'm a little bit hesitant on here. I think it, it might take a while for this to really get some momentum to the upside, probably after the Ethereum ETF rally, if we if we do get that. Uh, but it does look pretty decent from a longer-term perspective. Shorter term, uh, maybe not so much. Um, one other token I'll show you here is Lido LDO, very, very strong chart, it has a very strong chart versus Bitcoin and ETH. And it's just been going sideways for a really long time. The reason why I want to mention this is as we get into uh, potentially the ETH rally, which could happen after the ETF is launched, a lot of people will be speculating, I think, on some of what they call the ETH betas or the DeFi blue chips like Lido, maybe even Aave, Maker, Uniswap. Um, although I would say this one is not quite as um, impressive chart-wise, but Maker, Aave, um, Lido, <clears throat> these look really good to me and I think could get further upside if, again, we kind of get this Ethereum ecosystem rally. All right, guys, I think that's all we're going to cover today. You should join us in the Discord. We talk a lot more about these things. We talk about TradFi markets, scalping ES, altcoins of all different kinds. We hope to see you there, and until next time, happy hunting, friends.